What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I'm Carl Fisher. Today we got a great video for you guys. It's all on hammer and dolly and uh, the reason we're doing this video is a little bit unfortunate because I totally ruined one of my fenders for this van and you can't buy these things anymore. Um, you used to be able to buy them like you know in uh, I guess maybe even five years ago you might have been able to buy them but I need to repair this since I've totally messed it up. So Let's get into the video, everybody. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. All right, I'm gonna tell you the story on how I actually mess this up. The van was outside and uh, I, had the, I had the fender mocked up on the one side, just sort of clipped over and I was doing some yard work and I was pulling the, uh, the old Cadillac chassis, which was parked beside the van with the Bobcat and I was tugging on it and there's a kind of a little bit of a hill. So I thought I was just tugging on it, trying to get it up the hill, but the wheel of the chassis was rubbing up against the fender. And so I pulled it a second time and I noticed that it was rubbing up against the fender. And I was like, oh no. And so I kind of jerked the Bobcat sideways. The fender fell off, the frame fell off onto the fender. And now there's like 30 dents in this thing. So we are gonna try and save this thing. It is totally savable. I know it looks pretty bad. Um, there's just kind of dents everywhere. We've got one big dent up here. We've got kind of like a bit of a crush here where this all got twisted in. We've got a bunch of small dents here, a crease right on the edge line. There's another right there. And uh, <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is just all by hand with hammer and dolly. This is stuff that you guys will be able to do. I'm not gonna use fancy equipment for this at all. We're just gonna work through the process of saving this fender. So I've got another fender that's for the other side that's perfect. So at least we've got something to look at as well. And we'll be able to sort of test fit it as we go. So the first thing I'm gonna do whenever we've got damage like this is kind of think about how it happened. I just told you how it happened, but we've got to reverse the process. So any of the large creases or any of the large twists in the panel, getting those out first is gonna kind of relieve a little bit of the stress so that we can bring the stuff back. So first thing I'm gonna do is probably tack this dent right here and this crease right here. So I'm gonna probably use my hands as much as I can and then uh, and we're just gonna massage it out with hammer and dolly. So I'm gonna grab some gloves actually. This end looks like it's sort of twisted right in. Try and pull some of that out. See, I only tapped this dent a couple times with the dolly, just using this big dolly as a hammer. Got a bit of that out. It's gonna relieve a little bit of the tension to twist this out, which I don't think I can actually do by hand. Yeah, I think that what I'm gonna do right now, just to make sure that we're getting this approximately as close as we can, I'm gonna have a look at this other fender. Ah, that's why I couldn't do it by hand. There's a brace. So there's a little brace tab underneath here. Oh, actually that's not a brace tab, it's just doubled up. This tab is just to hold wiring, it looks like, but because there's two layers, I think that's why I had so much trouble with it. So I'm going to clamp on a pair of vice grips here. When you're working out dents like this, there's no real rule book as to how to get each dent out because each dent is kind of unique. You need to use whatever you've got on hand, it's just, you know, however you can without further damaging it. So I'm just gonna try and bend some of this out with these vice grips. Seems to be pulling it out okay. And if you do end up bending some tabs over and, 
and making a little bit of a mess, it's always something that you can work with. Like I'm damaging this little edge a little bit by prying on it, but I'm not too worried about it. Now it looks like the angle that this comes in at is supposed to be almost 90 degrees when I look at this fender. This is nice and flat this whole way, so that's my goal now is to make sure that this is nice and straight and 90 degrees almost to, uh, to the top of the fender. So to get that out, I think I'll have to brace this edge on something and hammer this up. gonna see if we've got something to use on the dolly stand here. So just a hammer on the side there, would I be able to get it? Maybe not without damaging this. Right now I'm just trying to think of what I could use on this stand of all the pieces that I've got to try and pull this out without damaging it. I'm thinking about putting a dolly on the back side and hammering on this edge, but I'm worried that I might put, do too much damage to that edge. So, I'm gonna need to find a way to hold on to this and twist it out. Now in some cases you gotta make tools on the fly just to do certain things. And right now I'm kind of thinking on whether or not there's a tool I could make that could hold on to that. If I clamp right above where I want that flat bar, should be able to lever against it. Oh, I just punched myself in the nose. Am I bleeding? No? We're good. Coming along pretty good, actually. Never had to uh, use flat bar like this before, but it's definitely getting it out. At first, when I tried using the back side of this hammer to sort of peel it out, sticking it in there, I, I do regret it a little bit. I've actually made a little bit more damage here, but I'm not really too worried about it because we're gonna be able to hammer and dolly that out. But uh, this is definitely working a lot better than that. I'm just setting up the vice grips all along and slowly working it out, prying with this piece of flat bar. It's always a lot of improvising when you're trying to get dents out like this. You don't make specific tools to reverse damage. Okay, I'm gonna try and find a dolly right now to tap these guys in. The reason being is that if I press too hard on this, now that this is kind of sticking out, it could make that a little bit worse. And I don't wanna kink this edge. That's what I'm trying not to do. I'm also going to try and get this bit of a crease out of there so that we're nice and flat. So I'm gonna repair this little piece and this with a hammer and dolly. So I chose this dolly just because it's got that nice angle on there. I can stick it right up inside there.
Okay, it's a little bit better now. Try prying on this area a little bit more. So right now I'm just trying to eyeball and see how flat I can get this because I know that this needs to all be on the same plane. I think this has gone a little bit too far here. So I'm gonna let that down a bit. I'm just gonna get that little bend out as well. Definitely getting close. I think there's still a little bit more of a sink in here. Okay, I'm gonna try and work out the rest of this crease and here, as well as put our lip back since we've tweaked our lip a bunch. Just using the flat side of this dolly to get on the back side. So just little bit by little bit, we're just trying to work as much of it out as we can. Now I'm gonna fold this lip over. looking pretty good. Now from the factory, I don't think this was a perfect lip. You see here, right here, there's a crease. That crease was definitely there before because this structural piece is spot welded to the bottom side of this piece. And that is the edge that we're seeing. So that's not gonna go away because there is a piece on the back side. Just gonna have another look, eyeballing it. We do have a few dents to take care of here. Remember, this was where our large dent was that we just tapped it out a couple times with the heavy dolly. And, um, and now we can kind of planish that out a little bit. So when I'm choosing the type of dolly I'm gonna use um, to get out small dents like this, you're always looking for the closest shape to what you've got. So this is kind of like a bit of a shallow curve going this way and a little bit more of a curve going this way. So I'm gonna use it on the back side of this area. And one of the tools that I like using to get out smaller things is a slap hammer. Now this is one that I made from, uh, from an old file. And basically the beautiful thing about a hammer like this is that it's got a wide enough surface area that it can grab both sides of a dent, both high sides of a dent. When your dolly is on the back side pushing up, you can actually hit down two parts at once, so you can actually bring dents out. So right now there's a bit of a dent right here, and it's kind of low, so I'm gonna just make sure that my dolly's good, yep. When, you're when I'm saying that you're gonna choose the right dolly, I wanna make sure that the center of the dolly is going to be touching. Like if I was touching on both outsides, then there isn't enough curve in the dolly to do this particular dent. So I'm just gonna tap it a little bit to get it out. A little, yeah. Okay, 
And I'm just going to work it. Now there's a weird small dent going out. I assume it was maybe a, a pebble or something stuck to the, uh, to the tire as I dropped the chassis onto it. So I'm gonna try and tap that one down. It's right here. Just about gone. You can feel the most minute differences in the material. So um, I'm just looking at it, feeling it, kind of playing the shine across the damage to see whether or not we're getting most of it out. The other thing you can do is you can listen to the way the hammer is hitting the dolly or hitting the material and you can hear whether or not you're hitting on the dolly or off of it and that that tells you a couple different things some dents you're going to be trying to do hammer off dolly on so you might be pushing on the back side of a dent that's sunken in and hammering on the high spots to help bring that out and equalize its kind of and relax it back into its original shape or like this one it's a small dent sticking out I'm holding the dolly on the back side and technically it's on the dent but the hammer is hitting the high spots down and it'll sound hollow until it comes down to the dolly and once you hear the dolly behind it now you're hammering directly on it so that's kind of how you can tell whether or not you've got the dent all the way out Okay, a lot of that came out. Another thing that we can do to help highlight the areas that need attention is uh, by taking a flat block with a little bit of paper on it. I think this might just be 80 grit. It works a lot the same as, uh, as machinist dye, um, dye chem, or um, if you've ever seen somebody do like a guide coat when they're doing body work where they kind of spatter a little bit of black paint over some primer and then start blocking it, it really highlights the highs and lows. So this has, um, I think it's like E-coat or whatever it is, the black coating on it. And for me to be able to see exactly where any of the high spots are, you can just take a little bit of sandpaper on a flat block and just run over it a little bit. Now right now I can feel a couple of creases, but there's a few that are in kind of random areas here. So I'm just gonna run this block over and highlight them. So I know I've got a creased high spot right here, another crease there. These are low spots. So the hammer off dolly on would be to back the low spot with the dolly. So I'd put my dolly on the back side of this low spot and then I would hammer on these high spots. Same thing in this area. I'd move my dolly onto the low spot and I would hammer on the high spots. And you're not gonna hear the hammer hitting the dolly using that technique. You're just gonna hear kind of the hollow sound until it gets to the same level as the dolly and then you'll be hammering onto it. So I'm gonna do a little bit of that right now. I've got my dolly on the back side of this dent and I'm just going to hammer down on those areas. Sometimes a crease like this, you'll want the dolly to come right in behind it and then hammer down till you hear the dolly. So now I'm onto the dolly. Now I've got the dolly behind this area. We're just feeling for progress here. Now we're gonna hit it again and just kind of see where we're at. So you've got a lot more area 
that has come out of it. And now we've got fewer, smaller, low spots that we can attack. You can see my exact hammer marks here that I was talking about earlier when I tried to use the back side of this hammer to pry up on it. Try and get those out as best we can. This dolly might not actually reach right into that corner, so I'm gonna see if I've got something else. I'm actually gonna use this hammer as the dolly just for that little area there. It's pretty close, but I don't think that's gonna work either. To get right up in there. kind of as close as we're gonna get. All right, so I think that I'm pretty happy with how we've got most of this out. There's a little bit still down here that we're gonna work on. see there's a, uh, it's a low spot right in this area. I'm going to find out a little more about that right now. So there's that low spot that I could feel. I'm going to give it a couple taps from the back side with the dolly itself. Just bring it out a little bit. Just planish it down onto the dolly. Let's see what I can do to flip this over and work at it from this side. So I'm, it's coming pretty close. I'm, I'm not that far away, but I'm just going to back the dolly on the low spot, tap around the highs all the way around it. Okay, it feels really good. I'm also going to planish around these little spotted lows that were likely created by gravel in the tire that smashed it. So right now, with all these tiny little imperfections, I'm just doing a lot of hammer hits and I'm hammering lightly directly onto the dolly because what I want to do is just pinch that material onto the same plane. They're all very small little imperfections so we're just planishing. Typically this would be called a planishing hammer. It's a very low crown, large face hammer and it's perfect for doing this kind of work. Pretty much that's it. I mean, I'm at the point where I can barely feel it. And, uh, and that to me is pretty much where I stop. I don't really believe that I'm trying to metal finish. See, that's, it's gone. It's a couple little tiny bits, but metal finishing typically is when you would describe a car with no Bondo, no filler. And, uh, and that personally is not my quest. I want it to be as little as possible without getting outrageous. So this is going to be like maybe a 16th of an inch of filler to make that panel perfect again. And uh, I'm very happy with the amount of dents that we took out of there for how terrible it looked in the beginning. So I'm going to stop there and move on to some of the other dents in the panel. And then we're going to actually start fitting this piece. Once we've got most of the dents out, we want to make sure that it's actually going to fit the van like it did before. So let's pick another dent. We definitely have some major damage around this area. There's creases all over here. There's a big kink right on the edge. We're going to have to try and get that out and then smooth the rest of it out around it. Okay, so 
because I want to attack this dent, there's multiple creases up in here. And before I start getting any of these out, I'm going to want to get this major crease out first. So what I'm going to do is find something that I can hit that crease outward from the backside. And because this is mostly straight, I'm going to set this down on top of this piece of plastic here. And I'm going to find something that I can hit from the backside. And in some cases, the best thing to use is a hammer, like a cross peen hammer. This would be a cross peen. Um, you've heard of ball peen hammers before when they have a ball on the backside. This is a cross peen hammer. This is a cross peen hammer. And where's my favorite one? This is a cross peen. In the past, I've also used chisels that are blunt, but instead of actually hitting this using the hammer, sometimes um, you're going to want to hit a hammer with another hammer. And the only thing I say, if you're going to do that is either make sure it's a garbage hammer or make sure you use like a dead blow type hammer. If you're going to hit a hammer against another hammer. And the reason being is number one, you're going to damage them. Number two is they could shatter if they were, um, if you were really beating on a hammer super hard, they say never to do that because I mean, if it splits, pieces are going to go fly and you're going to get hurt. So um, what I'm going to do is just kind of hold it on the back side here and push the edge of this panel down. And I'm going to try and knock this crease out as best I can. It's actually quite rounded. So I'm going to use this rounded radius of a cross beam. I know somebody in the comments going to tell me not to hit a hammer with another hammer, but this is, this is a soft hammer. So that's working nice. So now basically we've got it to the point where we can just hammer and dolly the rest of that. Let's see how we can hang this off the table here so we have access. Give this a little push like that. So I'm going to want to choose a very flat, a very flat dolly for the back side of this. So any of these high spots that I can see, I'm going to attack those first. You can see we've got a bend right in the marker light frame and we've got a crease happening right along here. So I'm going to try and get that out. I might be able to force a little bit of it by hand. Oop. Feel that pop. So I'm changing my hammer to one with a little bit more crown just to work right in that area so I don't end up creasing it more with the side of the hammer. Okay, I'm going to go back to that <clears throat> to that soft plastic top and try and work a little bit of that crease out now. Okay, it's not too bad. Now I'm going to hit this end of the crease down a little bit. Hmm. It's having a hard time getting in there. Maybe this will be a little better.
still a little bit low right there. So I'm gonna flip it, try and push that out a little bit. So I pushed it out a little bit with the cross pin, and now I'm going to just planish it back down. Right now I'm just trying to feel any of the little highs and lows, getting as close as I can before I start scraping it with the, uh, with the 80 grit to really show it. If you end up using that you know, I mean, 80 grit's really not that bad, but, but some guys, if they start using um, like the die chem too soon and they're scraping it with, uh, with like a body file, there is a limit to how much of that a panel can really take. And sometimes in the aftermarket, the panels are a little bit thinner as well. So you, you, you gotta be careful if you're gonna start removing material that you don't get it too thin. Like you don't wanna grind away the imperfections. Or if you are doing that, it's gotta be very close so that it's, it's just a very small amount of sanding that you're doing. So I, I always try and get everything as close as I can until I can barely feel it or see it. And then I start really getting onto it with, uh, with the uh, 80 grit. So we're, I mean, we're getting pretty close there now, but I just want to feel if there's any other spots that we can get closer. There's a little bit. Okay, I'd say we're pretty close. I grab the 80 grit here. Just for the sake of it, I'm gonna show you guys what I mean by a body file. This is a body file. This will actually remove, you know, good amounts of material. And uh, if you hear somebody picking and filing, this is usually what they're talking about, the type of file that they're talking about. These are pretty handy. You can, uh, you can make them straight, you can make them curved. But I just like using the 80 grit. Okay, so there's, a, there's definitely a low spot right here, probably from me going a little bit too far with my hands. It's a very slow, low spot. That was kind of when it popped. So I'm just gonna work that up. Not sure if uh, factory metal could be manipulated that much by hand, but this aftermarket stuff, it's pretty soft. See, we took that right out, just with our hands. And whenever there is a bunch of trauma like this and damage, you can see how high this whole area is. And that is because, you know, not only the damage itself, but working the metal that much does stretch it. And when it stretches it, it's going, to, it's going to lift it up into a high spot. So we could use a little bit of heat shrinking here if we really wanted to, but I think that we can get it very, very close with only hammer and dolly. Um, another great tool is a shrinking disc. I've used it on the channel before. Um, a shrinking disc does the same thing. It's a flat disc that actually grazes over the high spots and heats up only the high spots using friction. And that will actually help sink some of those high spots down. But for us right now, we're just gonna keep hammering dolling as close as we can get it. And you can get most things with a hammer and dolly. So we did pretty good with this whole area. There's a few little low spots that we can kind of planish up. Um, there's a little bit of a low spot still where this crease is that I was trying to push out. So we can kind of get a little bit of that out as well. So I'm gonna push the dolly up on the back side of these lows while I'm hammering it 
kind of all, all along that area. They've mostly taken care of that. All right. Let's have a look. So now we've got this little bit larger kind of kink in here. And I guess it's locked in here because of this flange. This flange must have stretched just a little bit. But this I think we can get out just by a little bit of brute, brute force and then we'll rearrange that flange. Just try and push it out a little bit. It's got a little bit of an oil can in there now because it's such a flat area. Also, this flange has been tweaked as well, so it's probably adding to it. We're gonna just tap that back, see if it pulls it a little bit. I'm going to pull on this fender a little bit while I'm tapping it. We've still got our oil can, but it is looking better already. I don't want to put any like too much force on this area to create a dent since there really wasn't a dent there. It was just kind of a little bit of a bend. But I do see it going this way. Just looking for damage now to see if there's another spot that we can work on that's going to help lock the shape back in. But I do believe that it's going to be a shrink that needs to happen on this edge to hold that in place. Because I don't see any other damage here. I don't feel any other damage here. Mm, it's a little bit down here. I'm gonna take a look at the other fender and see what that lip looks like. So side by side, the lips look the same. We're very close to, you can see that this is pulled in more on our good fender. So this will need a little bit of a roll in as well. I guess there actually is a slight crease right in this corner. I'm gonna show it to you guys with the, uh, with this, I can, I just, I just spotted it. There's a, there's a tiny dent almost right there. And I think that that's what's locking our shape into an oil can. Right in this spot right there. I'm gonna see if I can hammer that out, maybe on our piece of plastic there. And hopefully that will take care of this pop that we've got going on. Okay, that big pop is gone. The major pop where the crease is going, you know, in there, that's gone. Like you can push on it, but it doesn't go bunk bunk, you know? Yeah, I think it might need just one kick shrink right on the edge. It's either that or we just bend this flange a little bit more. Oh yeah, no, it's still kind of there if I'm holding it. Okay, now, now the pop is gone. So I did have to massage a little bit right down here, kind of kitty corner to where we were hammering. There was a little bit of the same deal going on as right in this spot where our bend was. 
I just needed to massage a little bit in there and that, uh, that seemed to take it out. And look right along this panel now, there isn't that crease going across. There isn't the pop in it. Some of those oil cans are sort of the hardest things to take out. Let's take care of this crease right here. There's a pretty sharp edge dent. I'm just gonna start by working it out with a hammer. There's also another very round dent right there. I'm just gonna try and kick as much of that out with this high crown hammer as I can on the sandbag. my best just to hit right on the crease. I think that got quite a bit of it out. Now this little guy here, probably gonna go right back to this piece of plastic. If you're wondering about this stump here, this is one that there is another, uh, there is another video on building this. Super handy, this is a, called a shrinking stump. It's got a dish in here that if I were to try and shape a compound curve, I could, I could actually hammer into it and it would create wrinkles so that we could shrink a bowl, and this I use all the time. This is just a piece of, um, of nylon, and it's nylon rather than UHMW or Teflon or any other plastic because nylon has a bit of a grip strength. It just means that your panel's less likely to slide when you're hitting it and there's friction on it. It's, it's got more grip than a piece of Delrin or UHM, UHMW. So I use it lots. <clears throat> Just something nice too that doesn't mark your panel if you're gonna use it like I am to tap out a dent. Okay, it's enough so that we can get hammer and dolly on it. I always try and use a flat hammer. Like this is my this is my favorite hammer because it's kind of the planishing hammer, but it's the it's my go-to. If you use too high of a crown hammer when you're using a dolly on the other side, it's gonna stretch it more likely. So a flatter hammer with a little bit more surface area is less likely to create more work for you by stretching your panel out. So I'm just gonna planish that little one that we just took out with the, uh, with the nylon there. Okay, we're gonna have a look at this crease. We're gonna have to use a pretty high crown dolly to smooth this crease out. It's probably gonna be this one. I'm just gonna work the edge of this because it's got a nice crown both ways. I'm just gonna work right there along the inside of that crease. Just try and knock it out slowly. We got most of it out, but. It's actually pretty tough to, to know that I'm hitting the right spot when it's so localized on a dent like that with a dolly like this, because the dolly really isn't the closest shape that it could be. So you kind of have to feel for it and listen for it. Let's have a look. All right, so just to get this last little bit of that crease out because it's such a compound curve, I've lost the dolly that I use for stuff like that. So I'm gonna use my stationary stand here. We're just gonna bring the part over so that I can use this dolly on this part of the fender. I think that's gonna work really well. I'm just listening for it to make sure that I'm planishing how I want to because I want to hit the hammer on the dolly basically to uh, just to get the last little bit of damage out. Okay, I think we're pretty good. The, uh, the only other little spot was 
here. While I'm here, I'm just gonna switch this. One. This one. I was trying not to use these because not everybody has the stationary stand, but some guys that I know, they'll even make the stand and weld their secondary dollies on here. It just, it just helps sometimes to have a dolly that you can rest your piece on. I think in a future video, I'm gonna build a new stand that works a little better and maybe show you guys how to make your own. I think we've done pretty good. Let's have a look with the board sander again. All right. I'm pretty happy with that. We definitely saved the fender. There's a couple other sp spots that you might, I mean, it's really nothing, but we could get a little bit better up here. Don't particularly like the fact that I didn't quite get into that. I might think of another way to get in there. But for now, I just wanna check, check this back on the van and see if it pops on there. We might have a little bit of tweaking to do up here, but there's only one way to find out. And it won't pop on perfect because I haven't sanded all the, uh, all the spot weld locations. But the fact that it even goes on at all is gonna be a great improvement. Okay, probably stick a couple of ice grips on it just to hold it there. I think we're gonna have a little bit of trouble fitting this area. I don't know if you guys have already noticed, but this is all previous damage from a front end collision of this van. So these areas are gonna be a whole nother story to line up. Cause I think that the uh, whoever repaired it last didn't really quite finish what they were trying to do. There's a little bit of damage there, but let's get some clamps on it. Actually pretty happy with that. Like I said, still some fitting to do here because I'm gonna have to repair some old damage. But as far as the fender goes, it is looking 100% good enough. <laughs> you know, it might not be exactly as it got stamped out and sent in the cardboard box, but this thing is, it's fixed. And uh, I couldn't be happier. We got a fender again. So thanks a lot for watching Make It Custom, everybody. If this video looked a little bit different than some of our other ones, it's because we've got our friends from Pixel Motion Films and Speedline Filmworks in the house doing a little bit of filming and editing for us on this one. So I appreciate you sticking with us. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications, and get you on the next one. Thanks a lot, everybody.